Hi, I'm John from WorkshopAddict.com. Today I have the rigid R474 14 inch bandsaw to show you. Just we're gonna go over it real quick here. Um, it's 14 inches, what they have it listed at, but from the back of the throat to the blade, I'm getting 13 and 3 quarters inches and on a resaw capacity of 6 and a quarter inches. Now this unit has a 93 and a half inch blade on it, which for me is something I like because it's a common blade size. My first bandsaw I got, I thought I had this great plant bandsaw. It was a Sears Craftsman 12 inch. Problem is it was an 89 and a half inch blade. Something I had never thought of, didn't think of. Thought blades were all gonna be very easy to get. Now that 89 and a half inch blade was a very oddball blade and the only place you could get it was at Sears unless you special ordered it and um, didn't give you a lot of options. The teeth options we were set, three sizes, that's all you got. And uh, I found that very, very frustrating, but 93 and a half inches, there's quite a few, quite a few selections out there to choose from. And um, this one will take a blade from an eighth and an inch all the way up to three quarters, where my other one only did a half inch. Um, the bigger the blade, the better you're gonna have a chance at like um, resawing with. So three quarter inch, really nice. Now, we're gonna go over this unit, spin it around, take a look at it, and then I'm gonna tell you some things I don't like about it and then I do like. One thing I want to keep in mind, this is about a $500 unit, and um, I don't typically talk about prices a lot, but I wanted to keep this in perspective that this is more of a um, beginner's end um, bandsaw and not like your professional end that you're looking at. I can't compare it to a Laguna or something of that age or a Powermatic or something. This is not that uh, $1,400 bandsaw, but it has some really cool features with it. One thing is it's mobile. It has a mobile base built into it where most of them are stationary and you, if you want to move them, you have to put a base on them. Well, this has a simple one wheel in the front, caster in the front, and then two stationary wheels in the back. One thing I want to mention, when I put this together, that rotating wheel in the front, the caster, rubbed up against the base if, when it spun that way. So I actually had to grind a little bit away so I can allow that to rotate freely. I don't know if everybody's going to see that, but I saw that on this unit. All right, this is the picture that you always see on Home Depot site and Rigid site. So let's take a look at what it looks like on the other side. There's what you look at in the back. It's basically a cast iron arm right here, and uh, I can see why they don't show that picture. It doesn't look as pretty. But back here is the guts, and this is where you're working at. This is your uh, blade um, tension adjuster up top here. This locks it in, um, brings the wheels in and out, and this right here is your locking device for your bearings on here, your roller bearings. Now, at first I was hoping that this was going to be, you know, a dial where you can dial it up and down, but you can't. You actually have to manually move this around. Not a big deal. Your belt right here is your belt guard. Your belt attaches to your motor, which is hanging on the inside of this bottom case. This is not a storage compartment. This is just a housing for your, your motor. It hangs upside down in there and puts the weight of the motor, puts the tension on the belt. You can adjust and put more tension right here with this. And so let's turn her back around and see what else we got going on. All right, on the front side, we have our door. Open your door up. It's not a lock or nothing, just pull it open. And inside you'll see you've got aluminum wheel with a urethane belt on it. That helps keep your uh, belt, your uh, blade tracking correctly. And with your little viewfinder window here, you can actually see that it's tracking correctly. There is some directions on the inside of this, tells you your blade size, what your um, blade sizes can be, you know, 93 and a half, one and eighth inch to three quarter inch. So that's in there in case you lose your manual, you'll know. Um, down below you have a two and a half inch or a four inch dust port. So it's all out of one unit right here, right built into the door. Again, in the bottom, you got the same wheel set up. Um, one thing I like about this unit, like and hate. So let's talk about the like part. The roller bearings right here, very easy to adjust. You don't need an Allen wrench, very simple. Um, you can loosen it with that little thumb screw there, rotate your bearing one way or the other, and it will get tighter or looser onto the belt. There's also knobs in the back here where you can adjust them in and out. Super easy, just with a dial and a locking nut here. Thumb, a thumb nut, it's just super easy to do. Here's what I hate, down in the bottom. Front ones aren't too bad to get at. The back ones, impossible. I, I could not get at it without having to take this whole table off. So you could take this cast iron 14 by 14 table off 
to adjust that back bearing. Kind of a hassle, especially if you're going to be someone who's going to be switching between blades a lot. Typically I don't, so it's not a big, big issue for me. Um, I usually stick with one blade unless I get into some intricate cutting, then I'll put a thin blade on. So there's that. It's 14 by 14 base on the top here. Two things they did not do that, I, that kind of bother me is there's no light on this unit. There's, so if you want a light to shine down on your on your work so you can see your line, you're going to have to go out and get an aftermarket light. You know They have the big magnet ones that will stick on the back here and then you can fold it where you want to. Other thing, no rip fence. Um, my last one came with a rip fence. That was a love-hate relationship. It wasn't a great fence, but I used it from time to time. This one does not have one. In the manual it says, I think it's AC5001 is the part number for the optional fence. That being said, I could not find a place to order it. I tried just to see what it would cost and if they had it and I could not find it. It was on the Ridges website and it came back, you know, not there. So I did not have any luck with that. But for your entry level unit here, having a casters on this, I would take that over a rip fence right now because you can always get an aftermarket rip fence. So with the better belt size, the common belt size, I like that better than my other one easier adjustments on the bearings. Everything else is pretty much standard what I had in my last unit. So um, one other thing, when you are operating, there's this plastic sleeve in the back. That's where your bandsaw blade runs through there. And uh, I wish they would have made that a little more uh, rigid, I think, because this flexible one, if you turn it on, you can hear it rattling back there. You can hear that blade just a couple teeth catching it. And uh, not that it's a big deal, but it's just a little bit annoying. It's a little louder. Other than that, this unit works pretty darn good. I was tracking it earlier and you know, it's a new blade and everything, but I don't have any drift on the blade that I had on my last unit. These bearings are really keeping it right where I want it. So for the price, I'm happy with this unit. And uh, if you got any questions, any comments, you got experience with this unit, please let us know underneath in the comment section. Otherwise, uh, go over our forum, subscribe, talk about some tools with us. Um, subscribe to this channel and until next time I'll talk to you later. Bye.